Over the last six months of documenting my cross-stepping and nose riding progress, I still seem to have more trouble cross-stepping on frontside waves over backside waves. It's normally quite the opposite for most longboarders, and I always wondered why. While doing my usual daydreaming while well, driving routine, I think I may have figured out the root cause of this problem, and in this video I'm going to discuss and test out my theory. If cross-stepping in either direction is something you're struggling with, this tip could make a world of difference. My name is Brian James, and you're watching Longboard Sessions. Stay tuned. Good morning, everybody. It is 5.30 in the morning. Uh, the forecast right now is saying two and a half feet at an eight second period with a pretty much direct west wind. So, so perfect longboarding conditions according to the forecast. Let's go see if it's correct. I got my longboard all strapped up. I got the dog food. My truck's a mess. <laughs> what else is new? All right, let me put this camera down, focus on driving and uh, I'll see you in Spring Lake. Now try and stay with me while I explain my theory because it's a little wacky. In this scenario, imagine the shadow of the pier is the wave and my board is angled the way it would be riding the wave. When I start cross-stepping a wave, I'm always moving where I want the board to be rather than where the board actually is. So I guess I should just step in the direction of the board and that will fix my problem. Kind of, but I think I may have stumbled upon something slightly more important than that. I did get a glance at the waves while I was driving and it's gonna be fun, that's for sure. There's really not a lot of wind, but so far, that's not a problem. All right, so I'm gonna give this spot a quick check and then make our decision because I'm excited to get out there. It's been a while since I surfed, over a week now, and I had a pretty good session last time I went out. So hopefully surfing's not like golfing where your best round is followed by your worst round. <laughs> now let's go put this theory to the test and I'll explain how this eye-opening experience changed the way I think about cross-stepping. With this first wave, you can see I cross-stepped very smoothly while trying to focus on stepping the board rather than the wave. However, getting to the nose too fast and then nose diving was a common theme throughout the day, but I was cross-stepping with much more control than I ever have, so I must be onto something. So I thought, well, let me try to trim the board higher on the wave before I start stepping and you can see the result of that. As the session progressed, I started tweaking the trim of the board prior to starting my steps. I was stepping with much more control and getting to the nose much more smoothly while positioning the board closer to the pocket. I started this session with the thought process of stepping the board rather than the wave. However, I came out of the water with the realization that the key to cross-stepping is properly trimming the board prior to starting your steps. You see the pros do this all the time, whether they're stalling the board to slow themselves down, trimming the board so it's traveling higher up the wave. All of this is done prior to starting their first steps and that's how they stay in control. For more tips on cross-stepping, check out these videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday.